Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Pastor Henry, and um, my assignment here is to lead us in prayer, and we're sorry for the delay. Um, shall we pray? For those of you that want to stand, you're welcome to stand. And those of you that want to remain seated, it's okay as long as uh, you bow your heads. Precious Father, we want to say thank you. Lord, we are grateful for so many things. To be alive this day, Lord of hosts, it is a testimony and is a testament to your faithfulness and your mercy towards us. Lord, as I look at the crowd today, my heart is filled with gratitude. The last time we gathered like this it was just a few of us. But Lord, you have given us the privilege to experience life together one more time. Thank you for the many things you brought us through. We are grateful. And Lord, today we are gathered once again to speak about your goodness, where you brought us from, where we are, and where we're going as a people. May your name alone be praised, because only the living can gather like this. We want to thank you for our town and the city and Prince William County and the state of Virginia and America as a whole. Thank you, ancient of days. For Lord, we bring, we've been through so much, but in the midst of this, you have been faithful. You have kept us. So tonight, we are just a people here to say thank you and to ask for your wisdom. We want to pray for the leadership. Lord, we pray for our presidents. We pray, King of Glory, for our mayor. We pray also for our governor. We pray for everyone you've placed in the place of leadership, whom you have given the wisdom to move us forward as a people. Lord, tonight we ask that you, you, have, you continue to give us the grace to stay united as a people, because in unity there is progress. And Lord, without unity we cannot progress. And our Lord and our King, we're asking, oh God, that you bridge upon our visions, upon our dreams, upon our expectations for our town in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Our Lord and our Maker, tonight, oh God, we ask that all also, you continue to unite our leaders. Give them a focus. Help them, oh God, for clarity of vision that you have given to them for us as a people. We pray for the law enforcement that you continue to guide them. You continue to strengthen them. We ask that you continue, my Lord and my maker, the King of Kings, to uphold this city, Lord, this town of Dumfries. We pray, Lord, against violence in the name of Jesus. We ask that you give us the heart, oh God, to care for one another, to love each other. Lord, also we ask that as a town, the Lord, there will be peace on every side. Above all, Lord, we ask for prosperity. We ask for increase. And we ask for direction for our younger generation. And Lord, we pray that, Lord, at the end of our assignment, they themselves will be proud of us. Thank you for tonight's meeting. We also pray, our Lord and our King, for what we are dealing with as a nation in this time. That you give us the wisdom to solve this problem of mental illness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We ask for your peace and your guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you.
That was outstanding to see those incredible young people um, do the presentation of the colors. And now we have another outstanding young man, uh, Mr. Tanner Nickerson, who's going to come forward and lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Tanner. Oh, let's all rise. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. I would like to actually ask you to remain standing, if you don't mind. <laughs> so sorry, lots of exercise. Welcome to the town of Dumfries. We're going to keep you fit tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm really honored to have um, uh, Latasha Archer, my wife, Latasha Archer. She leads us in our national anthem. Mm. Lift every voice and sing to earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song. Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun. A new day begun. Let us march on to victory is won. Let us march on to victory is won. Is what? Please be seated. We are really honored to have you here in the town of Dumfries. As the mayor, no doubt, will say many times over, uh, the town of Dumfries is the Commonwealth's oldest continuous town. And uh, we're really excited about all the great things that are happening in the town of Dumfries. Uh, my name is Will Archer. I'm a pastor here with the Potomac Valley Church and a proud uh, resident here uh, of Dumfries. And I'm really grateful that I have the opportunity to be here to witness our state of the town for 2022. Uh, now, uh, I'm a pastor, and so I'm going to read a scripture. And uh, there's a scripture, an amazing scripture, uh, in Jeremiah 29, and specifically in verse 7, where Jeremiah tells the nation of Israel to seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you. Pray to the Lord for the city, for if it prospers, you too will also prosper. And many of us are from the town of Dumfries. Many, many more of us have moved from other cities, or maybe you're exploring whether you want 
to come to the town of Dumfries. Welcome the town. This is the right time to come to the town of Dumfries. But wherever we're from or wherever we find ourselves, God has planted us in this place today. And we pray for both the peace and the prosperity of the city, because if it prospers, we too will all prosper. You know, we can't have enough prayer. So I want to see if we can bow our heads and go to God in a word of prayer before we have uh, the illustrious mayor from the city of Manassas come up and share some thoughts with us as well. Let's pray. Our God and Father, thank you so much for your love and for your grace. God, thank you so much for the promise of these incredible young people as we see them either doing the Pledge of Allegiance or uh, in the, a part of the Color Guard, as we see them among us, God, in 2022 and beyond, we pray that you will bless the town of Dumfries, that you will bless uh, Prince William County, that you will bless the Commonwealth of Virginia, that you'll bless our nation and that you'll guide our world forward. God, as we get the opportunity to get a, a sense, a checkup on where we are, God, we pray, God, that you would guide and direct uh, all of our elected officials, uh, elected officials from so many different places that are here to serve and to, to meet needs in our community. We thank you, God, so much uh, for our police chief and for all of our law enforcement that are here. We thank you so much for so many civil servants who serve in so many ways to build up different parts of our commonwealth and different parts of this town. We do pray for every resident, every person that's here today, that your spirit would guide and direct us and help us, God, to have a vision for where we're going. God, thank you that we get to have this conversation in Virginia's oldest continuous town. But God, we don't look to the past. We look to the future and where you're guiding us and where your hand is directing us. Guide and direct all that we do tonight and all that we discuss and help us as a community to come together with unity and clarity and the deepest conviction than ever. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm really honored to introduce my good friend, uh, the mayor of the city of Manassas. She's going to come up and share a poem for us, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I, I do want to say thank you to, to Mayor Wood for allowing me the opportunity to share this poem. Um, it is to be read with feeling, and I will do my very best to leave you feeling real good after this. I, I, I really did not want to follow Tasha, so thank you for that little break in between there. I really appreciate that. This is a poem called Excellent by Ashley White. There is no more silence in me. I am the embodiment of all things excellent. In fact, it runs through my veins, excellence. It is the root of this beautiful tree you see growing in front of you. I take on storm. In fact, storm must confront me before it touches any other surface. I am strength. Strength is in my roots. It is the foundation of my presence, the reason I am growing. Look at me, hear me. I may look broken, but if so, gracefully, with intention, with purpose. I am reason. See, Storm, she plans her days around me. I hold power in position as self. I am me, unapologetically me. How it feels to be a black anything in America. It is to melt into the clay that adversity surrounds us in and make masterpiece. It is to tunnel vision past my current, my very current struggle and move as if I believe life exists after this. Light exists after this. And so I wear my ancestors' work on my back like my favorite jersey. I am proud. I am grateful. I was fearfully and wonderfully made with blessings prescribed just for me. And my God, he wrapped me in destiny. 
So you will wonder why I smile. You will wonder why I laugh. You will wonder why I am still standing after that moment you thought you saw me broken. Why my charisma shines like summertime. And you will ask how, and I will tell you excellence. I will tell you it exists in all of us. How it feels to be human in America. It is togetherness. It is the acknowledgement that we all have storms. Storms are individual to us. It is the dismissal of this concept we call race and the embrace of you, of me, of us. We are most excellent when we are together with interlocked hands and intertwined acceptance. Our storms, they cannot handle that kind of power. We are altogether human, altogether excellent. And my God, he makes no mistakes. It is time we act like it. Excellent. Thank you. My name is Kimberly Goodwin. I'm the Director of Finance for the Town of Dumfries. I love dealing with numbers and I love doing forecasting. And within the town, you see a lot of people that's willing to do more. And economically, we are doing better as a whole with Destination Dumfries. I support the data collecting to show how the financial background is improving. This is Karen Yopal, I'm the Deputy Director of Finance and Manager for the Customer Service Center at the Town of Dumfries. DMV Select Service, we offer title, registration, easy pass, handicap placard, special and personalized license plate, trip permits, vehicle and driving record, as well as Department of Game and Fishing license. We also service uh, change of address for the Motor Water Vehicle Election Board as well. We are all here to help you, so thank you, namaste. Well, I'm Chief Guy at the Town of Dumfries Police Department. Been employed here since 2017. I started here as a sergeant. In 2020, I took over as the acting chief of police. In July of 2001, I became the official chief of police of the Town of Dumfries. The Town of Dumfries Police Department, I think, is a great destination place for officers who, are, who have never been an officer or are certified they want to become an officer. The Dumfries Open Data Portal functions to provide easy online access to local data and frequently requested information, to enhance transparency, to spark collaboration and innovation, and to inform decision-making through regular monitoring of key performance metrics. We anticipate the rose to generate an additional 600 jobs once we're open and pre-opening during the construction several thousand more. This project will forever positively impact the pride in the residents of the town of Dumfries. Today is our grand opening of our first town of Dumfries farmers market. It's all about community for the town and this is an amenity that we brought for our community to bring fresh fruits and vegetables and local vendors out here for the community to participate in. Hi, my name is Lisa Timmerman and I'm the Executive Director of Historic Dumfries, Virginia and the Weems Botts Museum. We love to bring in families and the community into our community museum and show you the diverse and the wonderfully rich history of the town of Dumfries starting from the 1700s into the 1900s. Your experience here will really be time travel as we take you into different parts of the museum to show you revolutionary war history, civil war history, and the early 1900s. We invite you to come in and to be guests into our house as we show you all of the neat little, uh, little ways that people entertained and all of the different uh, education and programs that we can offer. Thank you. So overall, our strategy has been to grow by design and not default. 
So really what that speaks to is intentionality, long range planning, and really a focus on strategic performance goals. So over the past 12 months, we've made a great deal of progress. The mayor and our town council, they really set out a bold vision. And so we are really now beginning to see the fruits of all of our efforts. Good evening, town council. Good, thank you, pastor. So, Miss Archer, in my head, that's how I sound when I sing. <laughs> but everybody else around me tells me that is not how I sound when I sing. That was absolutely beautiful. So, what is the chair of Loudoun County, Virginia, doing all the way out in Dumfries? Why did I get in my car in the middle of traffic and travel an hour and a half to Dumfries, Virginia? Well, the truth is, when someone asks you to come to the oldest chartered town in Virginia, you consider it. When Derek Woods asks you to come to Dumfries, you say, let me adjust my schedule. Now, most of you know Derek's CV, his resume. So I won't read that. I won't let you know that he is a, a former Marine, that he was on the Dumfries Town Council for six years, that he's a small business owner. You all know all those things. You can read that stuff about Derek. But I want to tell you about a different Derek that you might not see. And I got to tell you a little bit of a story. I am the chair of an organization called the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority. NVTA is the organization in, in Northern Virginia that moves billions of dollars around for transportation issues. Mayor is on MBTA with me. Well, the way MBTA works is it is a weighted scale. So if you're in Loudoun County and Fairfax County and Prince William County and the chair of those counties, you have a larger vote. Your vote counts for more. It's not a one-to-one -one vote. The vote counts for your population. If you're in a smaller city, city of Manassas, city of Manassas Park, you have a one-to-one -one vote. But if you are a mayor of a town, you don't have a vote at all. You can come, but you don't have a vote. And the way they do it is they have one mayor represent all the towns. So one mayor represents the town of, of Middleburg, the town of Percival, the town of Herndon. But that one mayor who represents all the towns does not have a vote. They can participate in conversations, they can be there, but there's no vote. So normally the mayors, when their time rolls around, they let, the, they let their position pass by. They don't come to the NBA meetings. They don't come to the NBA. They say, I don't want to come. It's a long drive. It's a lot of work. It's a ton of reading. It's once a month, maybe more if you're on committee. So they just say, I'm not going to do it. Every single time one of the mayors said, I don't want to come, Derek Wood said, I will take that slot every single time. What did that result in? Well, first of all, it results in relationships, right? You build those relationships when you come every single time. But secondly, it helps Mr. Woods know what is going on with the $2.5 billion budget that is funding transportation option, uh, needs and options. So when it was time to look at the needs of the widening of Route 1 and knowing how much that was going to cost, because of the relationships, Mr. Woods called all of us and let us know what Dumfries needed and why and how it worked and what's going to happen with the money. Now, we were talking about a huge amount of money. We're talking about $130 million. Long story short, the mayor of Dumfries convinced the chair of Loudoun County the chair of Fairfax County, the chair of Prince William County, and all those populations in every city to vote to give the only non-voting member $130 million. <laughs> that only happens from relationships, but it also happens because when you listen to, to Derek talk about Dumfries, I can tell you he loves this 
place. He talks about the people. He talks about the artwork. He talks about the food, often the food he makes. <laughs> he talks about the food. He talks about Dumfries. He truly loves it. And that love of Dumfries comes through every single time I talk to him. Derek is the realest person I have ever met. He is a true gentleman. He is a true public service. And he truly loves Dumfries, Virginia. So, town council members, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you my friend and colleague on MVTA, Mayor Derek Woods. sitting back there, I said, well, who's she about to introduce? <laughs> you know, and it's funny, as I reflect on the day before we get started, um, you know, I'm still kind of in awe how this community took me from barbecuing in the town hall parking lot to now parking in the mayor's spot. I, I, I tease people and tell them, I say, look, I think I'm somewhere between God's plan and God's stop plan. I'm just right there in the middle. <laughs> Before I get started, I, I want to first acknowledge and uh, first of all, just thank my family. Thank my wife who's here with me today and um, my mom who's here because uh, family gives me the, the freedom to, to take on this, this responsibility. You know, they lend me to go out to the community and to serve and without their blessing and really uh, without her 20 years ago, we wouldn't be in the town of Dumfries because I had options to go somewhere else. So uh, please give my wife a round of applause. Um, to probably one of the, uh, you know, I'm biased, one of the greatest town councils that I think Dumfries has ever seen. First, my uh, vice mayor, Monet Nickerson, who's here with me. Councilwoman Salonia Miles. Councilman Tyrone Brown. Councilman Fields, his, today was his daughter's birthday. He couldn't be here. He made his way to Richmond. Uh, Councilwoman Neville is off representing Dumfries on the Northern Virginia Regional Commission who had their meeting tonight. And uh, Councilman Pete had to work tonight. And so uh, that's your entire Dumfries Town Council. Give them a round of applause, please. I want to thank uh, Mayor Michelle Davis Younger for uh, that poem was written by Ashley White. Uh, actually, she read it and presented it for those who were here at the inauguration for the mayor. Um, and at the farmer's market, I met her mom who just bought a house in the town of Dumfries. And so uh, just reading that poem took us back to that place and that memory. And she uh, handcrafted that to uh, Chair Randall for making that, that track from Loudoun County across uh, uh, the way to, to be here today, whom I have the privilege to serve with on the NVTA once a month. I make that track up the road. And it's funny because uh, all the mayors often do, there's an email chain that goes around and, and uh, a couple times, you you know, it's supposed to rotate. She said, well, why is it none of the towns in Loudoun serving? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so uh, I yielded a year and let one of the towns in Loudoun serve. And uh, I don't think that uh, there, there was much show. So it, it's a privilege to be able to, to serve and, uh, you know, to, to get in those rooms and, and understanding, you know, the power of just getting in the rooms and having a seat at the table because representation matters. Yes, yes. And I make sure that I, I represent the town of Dumfries each and every uh, where I go. Um, and to, to all of you for being here today, I want to thank each and every one of you. I can't see everybody, but all of those elected officials, dignitary, I just want to, you know, first acknowledge your presence uh, before we get started. Um, so now let's talk about building a bridge to our town. You know, to our town manager, Keith Rogers, and all the employees of the town of Dumfries, I too want to make sure I let you all know that you appreciate it. Uh, we see you. We acknowledge your work, your efforts to making us what we are becoming. And most importantly, the residents of this oldest continuously incorporated town of Dumfries. Thank you for uh, choosing me to lead us in a time such as this. I appreciate it. 
Also, before I get started, I just want to ask that uh, we take a brief uh, moment of silence as we honor the life and legacy of our former vice mayor, Mr. Claude Thomas Jr. Uh, he passed away suddenly while on vacation with his wife on June 7, uh, 2022, 77 years. He was first elected to the town council in 1984, and he served us until 2002. He was born in the town of Dumfries. He lived in the town of Dumfries. Every year he would grace us with his lovely wife, of course, of oh, 56 years, Miss Gloria B. Thomas sitting right here in the second row with her grandson. And our Christmas parade uh, with the Top Flight Corvette Club, and they were riding them Corvettes so gracefully. Please allow just a, please, a 77 moment of silence for the 77 years that he gave to this community. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, in 2012, when I was first elected to the council, our town was viewed as a place that people uh, just drive through when traffic on uh, I-95 was uh, backed up. It was, it, it, it has been the driving force behind our vision to help make the town of Dumfries a prosperous destination place where people live, work, and play. That vision was renewed in 2018 when you elected me as your mayor and you also elected a council that will come along and do the work to make that vision a reality. I'm proud of what your town council and I have, account have accomplished in the last four years uh, with a very aggressive policy changes and a clear vision and make no, stake, no, make no mistake about it, we understand that there is still much more work we have to get done in our process of becoming Destination Dumfries. Our purpose of tonight's State of the Town Dress is to celebrate and highlight what we've accomplished on our journey to becoming Destination Dumfries. Becoming represents a constant state of change and growth towards a state. A destination is defined as an attraction or an event that people are willing to travel a distance to get to, either because it's very good or distinctive, or it's located in a popular and an interesting place. Sound like Dumfries? <laughs> Becoming Destination Dumfries really is not something new. It's actually our purpose with why we were the first chartered town in the state of Virginia. It all started on a settlement on Quantico Creek in the 17th century with the first recorded structure being a church called the Quantico Church. It's located now where we have the Dumfries Cemetery. Richard Gibson also recognized Dumfries as a destination place, a place that was very good because of its location, by erecting a mill for grinding grain. And he did this as early as 1690 at the mouth of Quantico Creek. Then Scottish merchants began to recognize Dumfries as a destination place, a place where they were willing to travel a distance to, of course, live, work, and play. They established a flourishing tobacco trade there, and they used the established waterways right along Quantico Creek as a primary mode of transportation. Why? To keep Dumfries a destination place. Pretty soon y'all get this thing. Throughout the mid 17th century, the port on Quantico Creek was very busy in terms of shipping of tobacco and iron. 
On May 11, 1749, by the act of the Virginia Assembly, they established the town of Dumfries on 60 acres of land located on Quantico Creek, near the public warehouses that were donated by John Graham. This was the true establishment of Destination Dumfries. The town of Dumfries was small, but it was an important settlement surrounded by plantations and tenant farms. At the center of the town during that time were public warehouses and the country courthouses and the county courthouse, which was moved from the town in 1759 in response to the town's growing social, political, and economic importance. Need I mention again that a destination is defined as an attraction or event in which a place that people are willing to travel a distance to to get to, either because it's very good or distinctive, or because it's located in a popular and interesting place. Also located in the town of Dumfries were taverns, there were ordinaries, there was a school, there was a theater, there was an opera house, there was grist mills, there was a bakery, there was a granary, which is a place to store grain, a shipyard, there was a racetrack, and we even had a ferry on Quantico Creek that took people to Maryland. Go figure. Who wouldn't say that the town of Dumfries at that period of time was the premier destination place in Virginia? In the late 18th and 19th centuries, because tobacco, uh, agriculture, and local trade began to dwindle, uh, there was the Revolutionary War that disrupted trade in the town of Dumfries. And to make matters worse, the Port of Dumfries, right on Quantico Creek, was being filled with siltation, and it became depleted of nutrients from a lot of the over-farming. That put the town of Dumfries at a disadvantage for remaining a destination place. And it made nearby ports look a lot more interested than Dumfries. Local businessmen tried to build a canal and they tried to establish new ports further downstream to maintain the destination status. However, their attempts fell and many local merchants left. Our town had officially lost the deep water harbor at Quantico Creek and had ceased to be destination Dumfries. As a result, in 1822, the county seat where our courthouse was was moved to Brentsville, indicating the rapid decline of destination Dumfries. In 1837, Dumfries was described as one of the oldest towns in the United States and once could boast much commerce, but owning a uh, variety of circumstances like many of the old settlements is now in a great measure, it was abandoned. And many excellent dwellings were in a state of rapid decay. No longer were we destination Dumfries. Dumfries did experience a temporary swell in population during the first uh, Civil War when Confederate troops were stationed right here in Dumfries because they saw it as destination Dumfries. Many sites in Dumfries were used as Civil War camps. We had hospitals like the one in our very own former Mayor Chris Brown Henderson House. <laughs> we had hospitals, we had uh, cemeteries, and during that Potomac blockade, in 1889, Cabin Branch Mine, which was a, uh, a pirate mine, brought about the rebirth of Destination Dumfries uh, to the area when it opened. There was a railroad that transported ore from the mine to the mouth of Quantico Creek at Possum Point, where there were also small-scale lumber and fishing processing industries. It was reported that the mine trade in the town of Dumfries made it once again a destination by providing jobs. Uh, it created business opportunities for over 300 men during that time. In 1917, the town of Dumfries continued to be a destination place when they developed uh, the establishment of the United States Marine Corps base at Quantico, and that produced more employment opportunities that began to bustle. Then in 1920, the mines closed, and many local residents uh, cleared out and transported lumber. They cut the railroad ties. They sold. They had to end up selling moonshine to begin to uh, make money during that time. That was their source of income. And the mine closure will create another period in Dumfries of economic depression where our town would once again cease being 
Destination Dumfries. Some may wonder what does this history have to do with the current state of town? I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. Telling our local history matters because understanding the events of our past helps us to understand the events of our past helps us to understand and learn our purpose of how we came to be that oldest continuously chartered town. And it's great and encouragement for us to once again knowing we will be Destination Dumfries again. Our current state is one of rediscovery. We're rediscovering that we have always been a destination place for people to live, work, and play. So when I say the new town of Dumfries, I'm really talking about the old town of Dumfries rediscovered. We are in a state once again of becoming destination Dumfries. And it started by electing a group of leaders who would embrace the responsibility of taking our residents into the exciting, unknown, and creating a new reality for the 21st century town of Dumfries. Dr. Miles Monroe defines leadership as the capacity to influence others through inspiration that's motivated by passion, that was generated by vision, produced by a conviction, and ignited by a purpose. This council collectively has been purpose driven and fully committed to creating policies and inspiring our town to once again becoming Destination Dumfries. Dumfries. Becoming Destination Dumfries is a collective effort from your town staff, from local businesses, and your town council. Under the leadership of our manager, Keith Rogers Jr., our entire staff is committed to the overall vision of Destination Dumfries. This is continuously made visible in the priorities that we outline annually in our budget. Coming out of a public health pandemic and into what looks like to be the highest inflation levels this nation has seen in the last 40 years, providing relief to our residents and investing in our organization are our top objectives. And because of this conviction of the council to be passionate about making the town of Dumfries, Destination Dumfries. Over the past five years, from fiscal year 19 to fiscal year 2023, our overall revenues have increased by 55%. And by fiscal year 2024, our revenues are projected to increase an additional. 178%. The town of Dumfries' growth is outpacing all of our regional partners in the competitive Northern Virginia region with nearly $1 billion of new investment in over the past five years in this community. And did I mention that the town of Dumfries is only 1.54 square miles? This gave us the ability to keep our residents' tax rate flat for a record seven consecutive years, which happens to be one of the lowest tax rates in the region. We eliminated our residents' vehicle license fee. That put an average household savings of $48 that could be used for gas or groceries back in their pockets and to provide additional instant relief for our residents who are experiencing values on their property increase on average by 15%, your council took immediate action and approved an historic tax abatement for the June billing cycle, leaving the majority of our homeowners with a $0 real estate tax bill in June. One of the biggest reasons we're growing is because of the investment that your council is making into the people that do the work here in Dumfries to make Dumfries 
Destination, Destination Dumfries. Our budget has allowed us to provide an 8% market rate adjustment for most positions, and our budget allow us to continue to support and provide 100% town-funded health care for our staff and their families. Making us the only local government in the Commonwealth of Virginia with such a benefit. In the areas of public safety, Council has taken action to update our policies in the police, de the police department uh, on our pursuit and use of force. Our officers have received training on de-escalation, diversity, and inclusion. The entire department is now fully equipped with body-worn cameras, and they're trained on how to use them. Lastly, in the areas of public safety, your council took action swiftly and banned firearms within public buildings wherever the council meets. In the areas of government transparency, we launched the Dumfries Open Data Portal, which provides access to data and information about the town of Dumfries with a map located of all town businesses. It also includes data on demographics, business licenses, permits, storyboard visualizations, and updates on strategic performance goals. We also publish a quarterly newsletter that's printed and can be found digitally on the town's website. And we are the first council uh, mayor to receive the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award from the Government Finance Office Association three years in a row. One of the areas your council has been committed to improving on is our customer service. We have uh, charged our town manager to establish an Office of Civil Engagement. The Office of Civic Engagement will be charged with increasing and enhancing interaction between our government and our residents. Staff in this office will be responsible for special events, public information, community programming, and customer service. The Office of Office of Civil Engagement has quickly started the Dumfries Farmers Market and held the grand opening on June 18th in the parking lot of the recently acquired Rescue Squad. Not only will the Rescue Squad be home to our Farmers Market, but the staff is working with community partners to be able in the near future to provide recreational programming right here in our community. Destination Dumfries cannot happen without the support of our community partners and our businesses. Our Town Customer Service Center, which houses our DMV Select, is available for all our residents, is available for all our business owners and our visitors to use. To eliminate wait times, we have set it up where you have to have an appointment, and many times people are able to get same-day appointments. Eliminating the amount of time generally spent waiting for these services. The only one-stop shop of its kind, I think, in the state of Virginia, allowing you to take care of your Department of Motor Vehicle needs and all of your town business all in one location. What a destination. <laughs> destination Dumfries also cannot happen without developing the young people in our community. That's why we continue to partner and support organizations like the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Washington, which has served right here in our community over 2,100 youth in the Prince William County area by building confidence, developing character, and acquiring the needed skills to grow into productive, civil-minded, responsible adults. 
Our club, located on Old State Coach Road, offers our youth a power hour of tutoring and home workout. They offer career launch, a program that helps 13 to 18 year olds access their skills and interests to be able to explore careers, to make sound educational decisions and prepare to join our nation's workforce. They have a college readiness program that helps our youth work towards and prepare for post-secondary education. One of the largest programs, one of the largest programs we'll highlight tonight is their Money Matters program, which helps young people learn financial literacy so that they can make good financial decisions as adults. Also headquartered right here in the Wilma Porter Municipal Building, support, supporting our youth in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is Future Kings. Future Kings has been serving boys of color from economically challenged communities for over the past 12 years. They're a year-long after-school educational program that guides young men in ages 6 to 12 from underserved communities to explore exciting careers in STEAM, which with targeted focuses in cybersecurity, computer gaming design, biomedical sciencing, and engineering. And what Dr. Eric King is doing for these young boys is amazing. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> For over 53 years, Action in Community Through Service, ACTS, has been an anchor in our community. They're currently one of the largest employers. They provide both human services with utility and food assistance, housing, and a thrift store. They also offer crisis service, which include a crisis hotline, domestic help, suicide law support, and sexual assault. In the areas of helping to make Dumfries a destination place, Axe has distributed over $23 million worth of food during the pandemic from their hunger prevention center. It has been, been very instrumental in helping navigate and, and survive the recent health pandemic. Acts also increased their grocery home delivery program service for our senior citizens. They have recently completed, renovated, and renovated their thrift store inside and out with a new welcoming facade to spruce up Curbifield and rename the thrift store Second Acts, once again helping to make Dumfries. <laughs> please give a round of applause to those organizations. Stand up, Steve, please. <laughs> Destination Dumfries wouldn't be complete without investments into our infrastructure. A new town hall and council chambers that you're sitting in today saved our community over $7 million in four years, and every office in this building now is currently leased out, making the investment in this town hall cash flow positive. We've also made investments in our community parks, adding a state-of-the-art green public bathroom. This little building is completely off the grid. It's powered by solar panels. Uh, the toilets use rainwater. And then they pump to a sewer vault directly under the building using this thick rubber ceiling. No smell, no flies. <laughs> the interior and exterior lights are powered by the solar panels that's on the roof. And after 10 years, this Ginn Memorial Park can finally remove the porter party. <laughs> a much more enjoyable experience for our residents and friends. Uh, the town of Dumfries is bridging also that digital divide. Thanks to our partnership with our Fortune 5000 based company, uh, TSI, with the expansion of our uh, local public Wi-Fi. 
Your council wanted to provide high-speed, reliable, broadband, wireless internet service to our residents and our visitors. We recognize here in the town, we don't have uh, an accessibility or broadband issue that our issue that we really wanted to address was the affordability issue. And so we attached Wi-Fi to all of our public parks and buildings so that Wi-Fi can be accessible anywhere in those vicinities. Additional capital infrastructure investments in our community include neighborhood street lights in the nose of Dumfries, new vehicles for our police department, and upgrades to our stormwater ponds and pools. The most notable partnership I like to highlight tonight in making us Destination Dumfries is, is Rosie's. Rosie's, believe it or not, attracts over 10,000 visitors a month to a shopping center where they personally made a $5 million investment into. In addition, they've been a part of this community by volunteering at our events and working with our staff. And I checked the record, and year to date, they have currently donated over $240,000 to over 50 organizations in our community. And they plan to donate another $60,000 before the year is over. If I could note, all of this was done by Rosie's without the town of Dumfries giving them any type of incentives or no tax break. This was all paid for their top, their, all the, their old dime. Give Rick and Rosie's community a round of applause for that. This is going to be a great part of, of just the beginning of our partnership in becoming. We are estimated that the roads will be open by the winter of 2023. There's going to be restaurants. There's going to be banquets. There's going to be gaming. It's going to put Dumfries in a great position to become. Destination Dumfries. Destination Dumfries for events and conferences. As I look back now over the last 10 years, and I'm reminded of where we were, to see where we are now, and I get excited about the possibilities of what the next 10 years are going to look like. Our vision as a council has been based collectively on our spirits out in the community, talking to each and every one of you. As we continue to grow and develop the town for the next few years, I want to let you know that you play a major role. Your voice, your participation. We want you to stay connected to us. Subscribe to our newsletters. Subscribe to our text alerts. Show up to our community events. Show up to town council meetings. Come and tell us what you'd like to see more. Speak to us when you see us in the grocery store. Speak to us when you see us in the parks. And by the way, it's okay to share with us what you see that we're doing that you like. You don't have to always bring complaints. <laughs> As you can see now, the new destination Dumfries is building on the rich history of the old Dumfries. And with the right leadership, we have been able to position our town to once again be. Yes. Thank y'all for your time tonight. God bless you and have a good night. Close them out. All right, let's close out in a word of prayer. Let's give it up one more time for Mayor Wood. I'm gonna close out in a word of prayer here. Let's bow our heads. God, we thank you so much that we get the opportunity to be here at this time in Dumfries history. 
Uh, Dumfries has such a rich and amazing history. And we thank you, God, just for the, the vision, for the clarity, for the conviction, for the leadership that the mayor and the council have provided, for the incredible, tireless work that uh, the town staff have put into developing these plans. Uh, God, we thank you for the rich blessings that you've given us as we've seen uh, just uh, record changes happening here in the town of Dumfries. As we take this time to be together tonight, we do pray in the spirit of what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 29, that the place that you have planted us, where you planted us to live, where you planted us to play, to work, to worship, God, that in this place that you would bring incredible prosperity and peace. God, thank you so much. I pray, God, that you'd also continue to give this town council and this mayor and all of the officials and all of the staff incredible wisdom and clarity so that we can make decisions so that these wonderful young people that let us in the color guard, that let us in the Pledge of Allegiance, for whom we are building everything, will be given a town, will be given a community that is thriving like never before. We pray all these things with great confidence. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, refreshments will be served. We're happy that you're all here. God bless you. Bless you.